So joins are pretty common across both transactional databases like Postgres, MySQL and analytics database like Redshift, BigQuery and even distributed computation frameworks like Apache Spark. They are so common, so common that we don't even think twice before adding the next inner join clause in our table. Right? As an engineer, we don't care typically on how they are implemented. We just write SQL is a declarative language. You say what you want and the SQL engine figures out what it needs to do behind the scenes. Right? But in this one, we'll go in depth of the algorithms that it uses when we give them the joint query. Now, let's say we take a we take a simple example to understand it throughout across all algorithms. Let's say I am building a blogging website. I have a blogs table in which all the blogs are listed. Each blog table has a column called user ID to tell who wrote that particular blog. right? And I have a users table. What I want to do, I just want to fire a simple query which says for like across all users, each user, the number of blogs they published ordered by the total number of blogs in the descending order. So my query would look simple, something like this, select user.name and count star from blogs inner join users on blog.userid equal to user.id. Right? So now I'm joining the two tables on blog.userid and user.id and counting the number of blogs that are there. Right? Order by B count descending order. Right? This would give me for each user, the total number of blogs he or she published ordered by total number of blogs in descending order. Right. Okay, but given this query, how is your database engine, MySQL, Postgres, whatever, they are implementing it internally. What are they doing internally to do it? One of the four, one of the easiest algorithm that databases implement to do joins across two tables is called nested loop join. Now what nested loop join does, it's very simple. As the name suggests, it is a nested loop for within a for. Right. So the idea is very simple. You start from each row in your left table, in your left relation. For each row of that, you match every other row in the right relation that's it literally for i like literally for each row in the left and for each row in the right you try to see if your join condition matches if it matches you add it to the result set done that's the easiest of all implementation so if i were to go slightly deeper into implementation details or as a walkthrough of this example it would look something like this let's say i have users table with two rows id1 id2 arpit and aria and I have a blogs table in which I have fly five blogs written, three from user one and two from user two. So overall, when I'm joining this two table, the resultant set would be having five rows, right? Because I'm joining two row on user ID. So what I want as a result is the joining this two table. So my result should contain columns across both the tables combined together on the join attribute, right? So in this case, my flow looks something like this. I pick the first row from this table. And for each row, I'm going through all the rows from the second table. Then I will check if the join condition matches. So first row from this, first row from this, join condition matches, I add it to the result set. First row from this, second row from the second table, join condition matches, add it to the result set. First row, third row from this, this doesn't match, so I'll skip it. Then I'll to the next row, then to the next row, and so on and so forth. So literally, it's the easiest of all implementation, one nested loop and you are done. Obviously, looking at this, we all know how expensive uh, for within a for are or nested loops are. So although it's easy to implement, it could be very time consuming for a large, large data set. Imagine joining two tables, millions of rows, two, 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 two slow, right? But it, because of its simplicity, they're really efficient for smaller data set. And if you have the right indexes, the flow becomes even faster. Right? So be mindful whenever you are adding two columns, just have the right set of indexes on them. Right? Okay, now the second one is merge join. In case of merge join, what do we do? Here the core idea is the merge of the merge sort. That's the, that's the TLDR of it. So the algorithm goes like this. If you want to join two tables, what we do is we sort each table on the join attribute. So my table one, which is users, I would join it on user ID, the primary key of the table and the blogs one, I would sort it by user underscore ID. This way, after the step, I would have two tables, both sorted on the join attributes. Look here, they're all sorted, right? Now, given I have two sorted arrays, imagine as list, right? For you, the merging of them becomes very easy. Right? In the nested loop join, we had to go for each row across all other rows in the other table. Now here, life is very easy now. 
because now what we know that are because of sorting in the right table and on the join attribute the rows are now grouped so now my joining becomes really very efficient i start with the first row i start with the first row from both the tables i see if the join attribute matches i would add it over here then i would go to the second row join attribute matches added over here third row join attribute matches added over here which means in the result set right but when i go to the next row i figure out that the join attribute don't match right but given that i have sorted this table all the possible ones user id equal to 1 would have been grouped there i know there is no other user id equal to 1 in subsequent rows so what i can do i can be very assured that i can move i can i have done processing all the user id is equal to 1 from here from both the tables so now i'll go to the next step go to the second row and match the subsequent rows from there it's literally joining of two sorted arrays dead simple right but again you see the beauty of how your computer loves data to be kept in an organized fashion in an ordered fashion because a lot of algorithms become really efficient when your data is ordered this is a classic example of that again this merge join approach it is very efficient for large data set because you are just sorting two things once right and then just a sequential scan across them and you are done with join but again that a pre join preparation that you are doing which is sorting of two two tables that could become a problem if it is very large but it's still decent enough for large data set right. scanning happens once which is excellent and if you have the right set of indexes like always you can skip going through all the rows and like directly go to that location and start iterating from there so again indexes do make these things faster right. this is the second algorithm the third algorithm that that databases can use to perform joins of two tables are hash join in hash join the idea is again very simple you have some sort of preparation that you need to do and as the name suggests it has to do something with hash function right so what do you do you take you do very simple things you take one table on the join attribute store it in the hash table right for example if let's say i want to have join across users and blocks as the example that we are talking about what i would do is i would take the blocks table and i would iterate it row by row for the relevant rows for the rows that are relevant to me and i will put them in a hash table the hash key of the table would be the join attribute because i'm joining on user id so i would put all the rows pass i'll pass the join attribute through the hash function that holds my hash key and that goes in my hash table so for example all the rows where user id is equal to 1 goes to this slot all the rows for user id equal to 2 goes to this slot again collisions are there not a problem but i am storing all the rows over here in this hash table so now what happens is now this is my preparatory stage once this is done now the joins is pretty simple i can literally simply just go through each row from the users table then do a simple hash table lookup to figure out where this id 1 is present i have all the rows i'll pick the ones which are relevant from there which means which has exactly the real id the same join attributed i'm looking for because there are possible that two different user ids map to the same hash slot and there is a collision so i would still need to match the join attribute and then keep adding it to the result set right so i'll start with row 1 i have user id 1 i'll go to that hash slot for each of the rows present in this in this value uh, like uh, that map to the same hash slot i'll go through them one by one if the join condition matches i'll add it to the result set right once i exhaust this row then i go to this row this row 2 i'll go to that all the rows that match join them and put it in my result set so again this hash join is really well suited for equi joins equi joins means where you are mapping user id is equal to u dot id right so block dot user id equal to u dot id equi equivalent joins right it is efficient for large data set again pre join preparation is required but it just hash table construction once but the overall benefit that you get is pretty high right but again you could very clearly see given that we are constructing a new hash table additional memory requirements kick in and the entire thing is defined on the premise that my hash function should distribute the data equally almost equally that if it is a skewed hash function then everything gets skewed to the same row then you don't get any benefit out of it right so some precursors but this is the third algorithm the databases use to perform joins of two tables now one key thing 
how do your SQL engine decide which one to pick? So what SQL engine, typically Postgres engine for example, what they do is they take a look at the data, they do statistics, they, they typically maintain the statistics across all tables, distribution, cardinality, etc, etc. And they figure out what is the best way to join these two tables. And they pick one of these three algorithm to perform the join. So this is where your SQL query optimizer on query planner and optimizer kicks in who does this analysis for you. Right? And this is how your databases join two tables internally, the three famous algorithm being nested loop join, merge join and hash join. Right? There are variants of these algorithms which are optimized for certain set of use cases. But again, the core idea would be one of these three. Right? And yeah, this is all what I wanted to cover in this one. I hope you found it interesting. Hope you found it amusing. That's it for this one. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Etta.